Hi, everyone. Welcome to Life Coach University and the Pay It Forward program, where we do conferences and, and talks and courses. We're so happy to have you here. If you get value from this today and you want to pay that kindness forward out in the world, we would love to hear that story from you. So please email that to us at hello at lifecoachuniversity.com. My name is Chris Wells. I am a life coach for men um, focused on relationships, and uh, it, it's a great joy of mine to help people work through the issues they have in their relationships and create and maintain beautiful, healthy, joyful relationships with their partners. And so this whole month, I've been talking about relationship recovery and starting with self-awareness and now we're talking about self-management and uh, yesterday or Friday I talked about setting boundaries and and how those are for us and not really for other people except you know we do communicate those to them and and that gives them the opportunity to help us with our own boundaries but they're really about us and our own self-management in, in life. And today we're going to be getting into self-love and self-care because if we're if we don't love ourselves and we're not taking care of ourselves, that makes it really difficult. Uh, I would say impossible, really, to truly love others and care for others um, the way that they need to be and the way that's good for us, at least. And so, I think it's in, really I think it's incredibly important to be able to love yourself, show yourself love, and to take care of your health. So your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health. And this takes a dedicated daily commitment. It takes self-management and discipline to be able to do that. And, and so, you know, that's why I'm here talking about that in the self-management section and I, this is one of those things that can be you know we, we all know these things maybe but it can be hard to put into play and and then we're hard on ourselves and then we create these downward spirals and so i think you know starting with self compassion and self forgiveness uh, when we're not perfect about our diet and our exercise and all the other things we know we should be doing to take care of ourselves, you know, it starts with that like self-compassion, self-forgiveness, like knowing that, hey, you know, we're human, we make mistakes, we're not going to get it perfectly all the time. We, we, you know, can just, you know, from where from wherever we're at, whatever happened yesterday, whatever happened one minute ago, you know, we can move forward from there and get back on track with taking care of ourselves and uh, giving ourselves the love that we need. So before I get into the like the things that are, are good and healthy to be doing for ourselves for self-love and self-care, let's talk about the like the self-abuse that I think we're all probably very familiar with. And I'm, I'm sure you've all heard the term garbage in, garbage out. And so when we are taking in a lot of um, negativity and consuming things that aren't healthy for us, uh, including our own thoughts uh, and and emotions and how we process stuff and you know what what is coming from that and how, and then what we're putting out into the world is also going to be not so healthy. It's going to be negative uh, and that's really damaging for our relationships, right? And so that's why I'm talking about self self love and self care in the middle of a month of talks on relationship recovery. It's really important that we are, we're consuming positivity and we're creating that internally. And so we're able to genuinely give that out coming from a really healthy place. And so Let's talk a little bit about the stuff that some of us might be doing on, on a regular basis and how that could be hurting. So the the self abuse, right, where we're we're not eating 
healthily. We're not exercising like we should. We're not getting the the sunlight that we need to, to have for our own well-being. We're not. We don't have a regular spiritual practice. Uh, uh, maybe we we don't spend time with the people that are uplifting and helping us grow and become better people. So a lot of us, this is something that I really struggled with when I was younger because I, I was getting in trouble a lot in high school and I was, the, the friends that I had were, so some of them anyway, were doing things to get in, in trouble um, quite a bit. And I was getting in trouble just because I was friends with them. And the, the authorities at school, the vice principals and security security guards would tell me that, Chris, you need you need to choose better friends. As long as you're hanging out with these guys, you're going to continue to get in trouble. It doesn't matter what you're actually doing, you're guilty by association. And so, you know, I I rebelled against that. I thought, you know, who are they to tell me who my friends can be? Uh, and now that I'm a little older and I have a little more life experience, I understand how important that is to spend time with positive, optimistic people who are supportive, who have your back, who are really looking out for your best interest and want to see you grow. They Not people who want to keep you small because they're scared and they're living a small life. And so they're going to tell you all kinds of things to to hold you back and so i really think it's very important to for your own well-being to spend time with people who are going to help lift you up and help you grow versus hold you back and i know that can be really tough if the people in your own family are those people who tend to drag you down and so you know that's i'm not telling you what to do about that that's something you have to decide for yourself, but I, I know how challenging that can be. And so, you know, I personally try to be very careful uh, about who I spend time with um, and how much time I spend with certain people, just just because I know how important that is now. And, and also, so like the, the social media that we're consuming, you know, we're on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and you know, a, a lot of negativity can come in through that because a, a lot of people are upset about a lot of things and are very strongly uh, imp opinionated about certain things. And so they might be spreading information that isn't necessarily true or helpful in creating a fulfilling, joyful, loving life for yourself. And so we need to be mindful of what we're consuming as far as social media, media, the, so the news that we're watching, the TV shows that we're watching, if we're watching a bunch of violent, uh, negative, hateful shows that affects the way we think, that affects the way we feel, that affects the way we treat other people. And so it's really important to be very mindful of what we're allowing into our minds and into our bodies. So if you uh, are drinking heavily and you have a, an issue with depression, you know, we need to be mindful of what we're, what we're drinking because alcohol is a depressant. It can make your depression a lot worse. Um, uh, maybe if you're consuming a lot of caffeine, drinking a lot of coffee and you're an anxious person, that might make your anxiety worse. So these, these are things that might be really difficult to, to, eliminate or reduce uh, but it it's really important to be able to do so for your own your own health for the rest of your life for the for the quality of your life from this point moving forward and this of course bleeds into your relationships if you're depressed if you're anxious if you're angry if you're violent if all of these things because of what you're consuming of course that that affects your relationship it, so like the like the saying goes garbage in garbage out and i you know i i get that now and i didn't i didn't always when i was younger i drank a lot and i you know i, I hung out with with some guys who um, maybe weren't, weren't the best influence and and that 
that directly affected my life. And so what we really need to do is love ourselves. We need to choose to come from a place of love when we're dealing with our own thoughts, our our own activities, you know, like so watch out for you know the thoughts that we believe about ourselves. And then also, you know, I believe we are three part beings. And and that those three parts are um, our mind or our brain and our body and our spirit. And we I believe we have to make an effort to work on the health of all all three of those and for me that that looks like like for your body diet and exercise and getting the right amount of sunshine and forming healthy sleep habits and all of, all of that like that's really important for your physical health um, and then some of those carry over into the other areas like for your your mental health uh, some of those are the same, like diet and exercise also affect your mental health. Same with getting the right amount of sunlight. Uh, also, like who you're hanging out with uh, can have a, a major influence on both of those and also on your your spiritual well-being as well, right? So like meditation, that's something that crosses over between mental health and spiritual health again who like who you're spending out your time with are you hanging out with people who have similar spiritual beliefs and you know you have that communion or that community where you get together and you lift each other up and then you you generate more love and that sticks with you and then you pay that forward out into the world uh, are you spending time with those types of people are you working on your own growth because i think that's you know, that's food for the spirit is, is doing self-development work doing growth uh, always working toward being a that like next highest level of our like version of ourselves and then uh, we take we take all of these things right and then we project out into the world and so that's why it's so important to have that like doing things that are healthy for ourselves so that we're also creating healthy you know, joyful experiences um, out in the world and so i think that you know it it's, it's really important to know what to do first right that that's the first step is knowing that like and then next is putting it into practice because knowing isn't enough but, you know we we actually have to work on a work on all of this stuff daily right and so i think a good exercise is just to create a plan like to, to schedule some time to sit down uh, use a pen and paper or a spreadsheet or whatever works best for you and actually write down plans for how you're going to take care of your whole person, your, your spirit, your mind, your body, right? So um, that plan can include scheduling time for exercise, for meditation, for, you know, going to church, if you want to go to church or sp like spending time with other, other people in groups that have similar spiritual beliefs. So you can uh, surround yourself with that kind of love and uh, uplifting uh, behavior. Uh, and so then another thing is like start being more selective and intentional about uh, who you're spending time with. So maybe you can sit down and make a list of all the people you spend your time with and think about how they might be influencing you, your thoughts, your own well-being uh, you know are these negative people or are they positive should i spend less time with them should i spend more time do i need to make new friends and find new people to spend time with who uh, have my best interest in heart who are going to lift me up uh, and then another is like being more mindful and intentional with what we're putting into our bodies you know alcohol 
uh, any other drugs that might be harming us uh, or having negative effects on us. The, the food that we the food that we eat really does matter. If you're eating a lot of uh, things that don't go well, that don't mix well with your specific body and mind, then that it's going to bring us down. I know, like you know, a lot of carbs for a lot of people can really slow them down cognitively and physically. I put the weight on and all of that, so we do have to be mindful. And I'm not saying you have to be super strict because you do, you have to do what works, whatever works best for you. Um, and so I don't know what diet that is. I don't know the, the portions or the, the mixture of the things. So that's something that you'll have to figure out, but include that in your plan, your diet, and then um, time for exercise. Um, establishing a healthy sleep pattern is really important. I think people don't there's a, there's a lot of sleep issues out there. And I think it's because people aren't doing things that they need to do to sleep better. You know, we have our phones and our the tablets, we're watching TV and we're stimulating our, our minds when we're, you know, we should be winding down and sleeping. So like, are you going to bed at the same time every night? Are you putting away all the screens? Are you stopping watching TV? No more reading and all that. Just get like, get in bed at a certain time and meditate, relax, unwind, like let yourself actually get the sleep that you need. However much time that is, I, I, for me, seven hours, seven and a half is pretty good, eight, but you know, maybe some people need nine, maybe some people only need six, that's going to be different for you, you know you best, and so, but make a plan for that, and start creating the habits, and then get out, get outside, we need sunshine and of course don't overdo it you don't want to get burned but get outside make a plan for getting outside especially in the morning time you know before noon if you can get outside and spend 20 minutes in the sunshine uh, unfiltered so not looking through sunglasses you know, or not looking through the window in your house that that actually helps with your sleep at night so to get that morning sunshine 20 minutes unfiltered actually helps you sleep better at night. It, it resets your internal clock, the uh, circadian rhythm, and helps you actually sleep better. So that's something, and that's just good for our mental health anyway, and our physical health to, to get outdoors, get some sunshine, maybe go for a walk or a jog, go to the park, take your dog out, uh, hang out with your significant other or your kids, whatever you want to do, and, and play too. You know, I think a lot of us, we, we work and work and work and work. And then we're really stressed out from that. We're anxious, we get depressed, we get burned out because we think we have to, right? We're doing that from this place of fear and that's not good for us. You know, that's not good for our relationships to be working all the time. That's not good for our own well being. And so we have to schedule in time to, to relax, to rest, to play so we get re-energized, recharged, so we have stuff to look forward to. So we're uh, just feeling a little bit more internal joy, playfulness and all of that. It's really important to be able to, to do that. I, I don't think there's enough emphasis uh, in, the, in the Western culture, in the, in the States anyway, uh, um, on the importance of play. And for me, that, that's really important. If I'm not getting outside and playing, then I feel that effect for sure. And same with meditation. If, if I fall off from my regular meditation practice, I, I know it and my girlfriend knows it. She'll call me out on it. Uh, and yeah, so I really try my best to stick with that practice. All right. And so, yeah, this is kind of a lot to take in. It's a lot to go through. And it, it can be really challenging because sometimes it maybe takes a lot of discipline and, you know, we don't want to do it because the pizza and beers is, you know, what we're used to and that's so easy and convenient and cheap and it, uh, you know, it might be comforting, but just try to think about your, your long-term well-being and how this is even affecting you in the short term, how this is impacting your relationships. Uh, you know, if we have lower energy, it's hard to show up and create what we want to create in life. And so I really strongly encourage you to, to actually take the time to do this and turn it into a habit. 
of, of doing a little bit healthier things and maybe just do it incrementally. You know, you don't have to make this major change in, in your whole life all in one day. And then that's going to be the way you are forever. It, it's about progress, right? So start making incremental changes, make progress, keep going, form new habits and see how it, how it impacts you for the better. All right, I'm going to go to our Q&A now. It looks like I have a couple of questions here. First one, I started to schedule in time for my self-care. My partner was annoyed and called me selfish. My self-care routine, like swimming, going for walks, reading books, actually started to cause a lot of arguments. This made me so sad. I tried to explain that I needed the self-care for me, but my partner was upset that they had to do more household chores. All right, yeah, I get, I get this. It can be really difficult when we're in a relationship to take care of our own needs and take care of the needs of our partner and the relationship. So I really think that it's just, it's crucial to have open communication, know what you need for yourself and what you want for yourself and encourage your, your, encourage your partner to do the same. And then you can come together with your, your ideas of what you want for yourselves and, and for the relationship and all that. And what, and Make a list of all the things that need to get taken care of and do your best to communicate while remaining calm, always calm and kind while talking with your loved ones and, and just work, work through these things. Sometimes it takes multiple conversations. Sometimes it takes coming together maybe on a regular basis effort. Maybe you need to check in every morning and go, hey, this is what my day looks like this is what I need to take. This is what I need to do for myself. This is what I plan on doing for us uh, around the house, the chores, all of that. Um, what I don't know what will work for you and your relationship specifically. So, but these are some ideas, some things that my girlfriend and I have done is have daily check-ins, and, and we've done a lot of planning and replanning and having conversations around. All right, who's responsible for what, and you know when? When are you going to? do the things by yourself, for yourself. You know, for me, like I love to uh, get out and surf or, you know, go have coffee or, um, you know, go for a walk with one of my friends or something. I, you know, I want to, I want that time, but it's also really important for me to communicate that, to schedule it in, to not leave my partner in the dark, leave her hanging and not knowing, you know, what, what I'm doing. And, and then I just, neglecting my responsibilities right so we have to still make sure we're taking care of the the responsibilities in the relationship and at the house and then communicate 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 i, I really think that's so important to have open honest calm kind communication without getting defensive without attacking each other and just work through that stuff all right, next one. My workload is heavy. Sometimes I miss lunch. How do I make time for self-care when I don't even have time for lunch or even time to finish my work? Right. Yeah, that that's really tough. I, I get it. I've been really busy myself lately. And sometimes I slip up and I like go a few days without doing my meditation first. Cause as soon as I wake up, I'm like, oh, I need to get to work. And then I I really I start to feel the effects. So I think being aware of how it's negatively impacting you to miss doing self-care things um, is, is a good starting place. And then make, you have to prioritize it. You have to just make decisions about who you are, what matters to you. And one thing you could do is thinking about, think about your future self. Think about the, the 90 year old version of yourself looking back on your life what do you wish you would have prioritized when you're 90, thinking about your 30-year-old self, your 40-year-old self? What are the most important things for you now, now that you're 90, looking back, what, what do you wish you would have done differently, right? And so think about if life is, like, yes, live in the moment also, but <laughs> take care of your future self as well. And so it's just a matter of deciding and committing to what matters most for you. So if you have to 
watch less TV and go to bed earlier so you can wake up earlier and get your workout in or, or get outside and go for that walk. Whatever you have to do, you just have to make it a priority. You have to decide that you're going to, and then you have to commit and just know that maybe it's going to be challenging, but it will get easier because it'll become more of a habit. Uh, and then, you know, you might have to just continue to recommit to it on a daily basis and maybe write it down, put it up on the wall, some, somewhere that you see that this is what you're committed to. Uh, and then also creating a daily schedule for yourself and sticking to that, not spending too much time on any one thing like, like work assignments, just not trying to perfect things and just getting them done, um, you know, working on efficiencies. But I think spending the time to create your schedule so you work these things in is incredibly important. All right, third question. My work commute in the morning is an hour and a half. When I get home, I, uh, I only have 30 minutes to be with my newborn and partner. Weekends, I crash because I'm so tired. Any tips on self-care that I can do during my commute? It seems like this is time that I'm wasting now. Um, well, yeah, I think while, while you're commuting, uh, you can listen to books that are that will help you um, spiritually or mentally you can um, maybe you know you're not going to meditate like you would sitting at home in a chair with your eyes closed but you can do your best to not worry about anything other than what you're doing in that moment and that's meditation itself so just driving during your commute can be a form of meditation if you're 100% present and paying full attention to what you're doing in the moment. You know, I think we've all had those, those drives home or drives into work where we were so caught up in thinking about something from our past or future that we don't even, we didn't even remember, we couldn't remember the drive at all. You know, get to work and go, what, how did I, how'd I get here? I don't remember that at all. That's so weird, right? That's because you're not present. That's because you're thinking about something other than what you're doing. So during those commutes, you can use that as time to bring your full attention to the task at hand, the present moment, maybe turn the radio off and like all the, like no audio book or anything and just focus on your breath while you're driving or on the sights, on the sounds. Uh, of course, you always want to give your attention to driving, uh, but you can, if you're fully doing that, that's a meditative practice and that can actually help you de-stress, unwind. Uh, also, I, I think it's a great idea, a great practice to when you, uh, before getting out of your car and going into the house for the evening, maybe take a couple of minutes to let let all the stresses from the day go so you know maybe do a 2 minute meditation on your on your breath and um, just focusing on being present and and relaxed and so you're not coming home angry from the the stress of the commute or your work day and frustrated and you're so you're not taking that out on your partner or your family you want to be able to come in fresh and grateful to be home and present for them. And, you know, you want to be fully committed to like being there with them. Um, and so they, like, if you're meditating on the way home, just because you're fully present and aware of what you're doing while you're driving, or if when you get home, you take two minutes to just slow your breathing down focus on that don't think about anything else or if your mind does wander and think about other things just bring it back to your breath and then you know focus on being grateful to be home and and go in and share that uh, frame of mind that you know, hang out with your family with that uh, state of mind of that state of being all right fourth one i live in debt i'm always doing things that i enjoy my friends say that i know how to enjoy life, but inside I'm so stressed with being in debt. But for me, um, it's fun and I enjoy myself. I need to, uh, but for me to have fun and enjoy myself, I need to spend money. Well, you know, I, I get this because I've 
I've actually been there uh, and it, I, the stress of the debt was too much for me. And so at some point I just made a decision, I'm going to get out of debt and I, you know, that's going to be my priority. And I, this was maybe 16, 17, 18 years ago when I was in my twenties. Uh, and you know, that for me, that, that became my highest priority. And so I thought, you know, it's okay if I'm not going to be as much fun or have as much fun for a while. I, I don't like having this debt. And so I just decided this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you know, sell some things. I'm going to stop putting more money on my credit card. I'm going to get fully out of debt. And that, that helped me, but also um, start looking for new, or you can start looking for new ways to have fun and enjoy yourself. Right? It, having fun doesn't necessarily require a lot of money, you know, like playing outdoors. There's lots of things you can do to just enjoy outside uh, or spending time with people you love just sitting around and talking, just being there with each other. You know, just that doesn't necessarily require any money. And so it really what it it just takes deciding what matters most and then being a little bit creative and so actually spending some time thinking about things that you can do that won't cost you money but are still fun um, it so this is actually maybe a good opportunity to grow because maybe if you're spending money on on going out um, and you know drinking to loosen up to have fun I, and you didn't say that's what you're doing but if that's something then you can think well maybe i maybe i can practice going out and not spending money on all the food or drinks or whatever and just focus on on growing outside of my comfort zone and being present and letting loose without that right or realizing like hey i don't need to have this like i don't need to spend all this money on traveling or on cars or what, whatever thing it is you're spending money on just spend some time thinking through that do do you need that to have a good time is that true what else could be true right what what else can i do to enjoy myself right and and so start looking into some other options all right those were all the questions that we had so thank you all very much for being with me today again i'm chris wells and this was day nine of relationship recovery we were talking about self-love and self-care and you are joining me through lifecoachuniversity.com and the pay it forward plat platform with where we have talks and conferences and we are we're starting our first course launching that on june 20th it's a five-day course it's twenty dollars for the for the entire five-day course so you're going to get a ton of value for a twenty dollar investment and half of the that ten or half of the twenty dollars is going to a phoenix arizona based charity for helping women and so it's going to so some of those proceeds are going to a really good cause and you're going to get a ton of value and have a lot of fun hanging out with heather flake who is the one delivering this course so I highly encourage you to go to uni or lifecoachuniversity.com and click on courses in the menu and sign up for that. It's starting June 20th. All right, everyone, I'm really thankful for you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. See you all tomorrow.